Our topic was, how did mobilization affect a nation's economy and the American people? Before World War II, America wanted to keep the peace. Isolation was a huge policy. Through fascism and militarism, America stayed neutral. But soon after, Poland was attacked and France and Britain pledged to fight Germany. Although the U.S. had many efforts toward the ultimate goal of peace, we were no longer neutral due to financial support for our fellow allies. And as soon as Japan attacked America, we had no choice but to enter war. Industry goes to war. The industry had reluctantly begun to convert from consumer goods to defense production. The war had reached into scientific laboratories as well as shops and as well as many factories. Vannevar Bush guided spending to develop new drugs such as antibiotics, blood transfusion procedures, weapons, radar, and other military technologies. Increasingly compact and sophisticated radar systems helped to defeat the German and Japanese navies. The Manhattan Project moved from theory to practice in 1943. It ushered in the age of atomic energy. J. Robert Oppenheimer directed young scientists at Los Alamos in designing a nuclear fission bomb. The first bomb was tested on July 16, 1943. Rationing and price control. In World War I, food shortages increased prices, which weighed down hard on America. In World War II, as soon as prices began to rise, government decided to combine rationing and price controls. This meant that the government would place limits on how much people could charge for goods and could only buy a limited amount of these goods. They wanted to keep costs as satisfactory as they could. Americans even took a pledge for their support on rationing and price control. Buying products according to the rules became an allegiance for U.S. citizens, so we were all able to have our fair share. The Office of Price Administration was established in 1941 and created ration books. The Emergency Price Control Act of 1942 was formed to stop inflation and boost economic efficiency for U.S. national defense and security. To help with these new laws, people planted victory gardens, home canned their foods, saved waste fats, shared car rides, and donated their scrap metal and rubber. The Armed Forces. World War II had over 334,000 soldiers. Approximately 1 million African Americans served in World War II. They were split into black units known as the 71st Tank Battalion and the 99th Pursuit Squadron. The Army organized black soldiers in segregated units and often assigned them to manual jobs such as construction work. The nation had a mixed reaction to women joining the military as army and navy nurses. In total, 350,000 women served in the military. Many women hammered at typewriters, worked switchboards, and inventoried many supplies. Others worked close to combat zones as photographers, code analysts, weather forecasters, and radio operators.
No matter the cost, women put in a lot of effort to help the United States in the war. Confronting Racism World War II substantially promoted the Civil Rights Movement. All minorities were needed in the war. America took all the people they could get no matter their civil rights. Farms and railroads didn't have many workers since they were needed for defense factories and military. Therefore, Mexican Americans mainly worked on U.S. farms. The Bracero Program was created so Mexicans didn't get deported and Mexican government recruited workers to U.S. for 6 to 12 months. Mexican Americans still encountered harsh discrimination, but U.S. government attempted to enhance working conditions so that Latin America sided with the Allies. On social terms, there was an increasing rigidity between Mexicans and whites. The Mexican community in Los Angeles continued to grow. To show their hatred, white publishers printed newspapers with anti-Mexican articles. Sailors and soldiers assaulted Latinos on the streets and in Mexican neighborhoods. They mainly attacked Puchucos. These were groups of men that wore vibrant clothes called zoot suits to show their pride for their cult culture. Native Americans were an important labor force for military supply depots. Income, income doubled for them and a lot stayed in urban areas even after the war after realizing their success. National Congress of American Indians stood for voting rights since many states didn't accept natives as citizens. African Americans gained economic progress from war jobs as well. A planned protest called the Negro March on Washington against, race, against federal government discrimination led to Roosevelt issuing executive order in June 1941 saying racial discrimination was not allowed in, in defense contracts. He also created the Fair Employment Practices Committee. Their phrase was no discrimination on grounds of race, color, creed, or national origin. This executive order didn't do all that much, and it was very, still very hard for blacks to get jobs from whites. Agreements between shipyards and segregational unions inhibited skilled black workers from high-profit jobs. Black membership in unions still largely increased, and wartime success raised the average income for African Americans. Voluntary service groups were immensely segregated. Black women from the Women's Army for National Defense sold war bonds, helped with civil defense, and organized USO clubs for black soldiers. Many African Americans could now vote either because they moved to northern states where it was legalized or because they were serving overseas. Although World War II was a big move towards civil rights, not just in America but around the globe, there was still a lot of tension with cultures and collision of race and religion. Riots on territorial boundaries and discrimination were brutal. Japanese Americans were the main targets in removing residents who were potential threats to national security. They were already hated by whites because of prejudice, jealousy of business, and fear of Japan's expanding power. Anti-Japanese hysteria due to World War II gave officers an excuse to assault immigrants who still had Japanese citizenship. Japanese Americans moved around a lot in prisons. By 1948, U.S. took responsibility for lost property with the Japanese Claim Act. In 1988, we finally officially recognized our unfair treatment towards Asian Americans. Congress approved of redress payments to all 60,000 Japanese survivors. Many German and Italian Americans were seen as threats too. U.S. imprisoned 11,000 Germans and less than 2,000 Indians. Travel restrictions and curfews were usually the punishment for Italian Americans. Overall, World War II improved civil rights and opened up opportunities for most races and cultures, but held back others.